Hi guys, welcome to Tuesdays on the Den, and I'm your host, Dr. Phil. Alright, so this week we were supposed to be discussing drag queens, and after three or four days of preparation, watching RuPaul's Drag Race, uh, instead we've switched the topic to interviews. So without further ado, here's my interview. Alright guys, so today I've decided to interview my mom. I figured what better person to interview? She has a gay mom, she has a gay sister, she has a gay son. Plus the other bonus is she gets to let you in on some embarrassing stories of my childhood. Fun. Hi everybody. Hi guys, this is my mom. Alright, so what was it like growing up with a gay mom? Oh, myself, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> my mom was gay. Back when I was growing up it was really difficult. Right. Uh, a lot of people, uh, a lot more people were not accepting at all of um, the gay uh, people out there. I got teased a lot in school. I remember one particular time in grade six, I even had some girl come up to me, tell me I was a fucking dyke just like my mom and my sister. And I didn't even know what a dyke was. I had to go home and ask my mom. <laughs> Uh, so oh, I was pretty upset. It it was not not easy. Yeah, it um, sounds back like it was pretty was difficult. Up. Yeah, it was really difficult. And that was the 70, 70s, 80s. Yeah. Well, I was actually born in '60, so you know my first ten years were in the '60s, and you would have thought that people would have been more accepting back then, with you know the flower power, peace, love, groovy, but nobody was really accepting at that time. Right. And it just made it really hard to explain to people, oh, my dad, um, I used to lie and tell them my dad was killed in the car accident. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> So that's it tough. wasn't fun, and I'd introduce my mom's girlfriends as, oh, this is my aunt. Right. Or this is my, my mom's uh, cousin, or... <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, when did you first discover that I was gay? I had speculation uh, when you were younger. Uh, you used to insist um, on certain gifts that really spoke to me. Like, for example, when you had your Cricket and Corky life-size dolls. Uh, that pretty much sort of spoke to me. People tried to convince me then that you were gay, and I said, no, you know, he just likes to play with dolls, and that's a really great thing because it'll it'll help him become a better parent, and be, he'll be a great father. Well, I think he really convinced me that he was gay when we were shopping one day for bathing suits. Oh, no. And he was seven at the time and insisted on having this hot pink one-piece bathing suit. <laughs> yeah, that's when I pretty much knew that uh, I had a gay son. <laughs> and I was perfectly okay, so. Well, that's good. <laughs> I, I, I didn't mind it at all because I'd grown up with a gay mom and a gay sister and I didn't really... It wasn't a huge shock no, when I came out? No, <laughs> Not an issue. All right, uh, what is a gay bear? A gay bear is a gay man that's really hairy. You know, like hair on lots of hair on the head and the face and hair on the arms and legs and definitely got a hairy chest. All right. <laughs> um, any embarrassing stories? Um, hmm. Embarrassing stories. About okay. me. <laughs> About you. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. If there's anything really embarrassing, uh, you're always one to, s you're polite, you always help me out, you made other parents really proud and... Didn't ever shave my head? You did do that. <laughs> I shaved a bald spot in my head when my brother stuck oh, gum in my hair. Oh, <laughs> you did that. Yes, you did. You, you, that was right before picture day. You shaved a big chunk out of the front of your head. <laughs> That was pretty funny. All right, and any advice you have for anybody with a gay parent or a gay son? My advice is love your child and accept them 
just because the world out there says that gay is bad or gay is not acceptable, and not so much these days, thank God for that, but don't listen to it. And gay, being gay is not a sin. Okay, I hear that a lot. Being gay, it means that you're you're in living in sin. You're not. It is is just the way it is. It's just the way you were born, and it's not a choice. It is actually genetic. It's right in your DNA. I believe that if you're a gay man, uh, it wasn't something you chose to do. It wasn't something you chose to be. It was. That's the way it is. And. The more acceptance that you can give your child at home from day one, it's a stronger, more independent and outgoing child you're going to raise. Excellent. All right. Anything else you wanted to say to the viewers or anybody that's watching at home? Personally, I had three boys. I raised three boys. I really, really wanted a girl. And I was really kind of happy that I had a gay son because that was the closest thing to a girl that I was ever going to have. <laughs> so it was nice because I at least had one that liked to help me out around the house, liked to bake with me, liked to cook with me, liked to hang with me and watch all my shows. <laughs> the other two, forget it. They had their own agenda. But definitely, uh, definitely... A great thing having a gay son. I wouldn't change it for the world. Excellent. All right, so guys, that was my mom. Uh, thank you, and I'll see you soon. Bye, guys. All right, guys, so you guys asked me some questions on the YouTube forum. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can answer them. Drew Neild asks, Question for you as a tattoo artist. I am an HIV positive man and I'm having trouble finding artists to tattoo me and was wondering what is your view on inking HIV positive guys. I personally do not have any issues with it whatsoever. I consider it the same as tattooing anybody. I think as long as you follow proper safety and sanitization guidelines and procedures, there should be no reason to turn you away because of your HIV status. Uh, blood is blood. There are other people living with diseases, hep C, that still continue to get tattooed, so I don't see why somebody would turn you away for your HIV status other than discrimination, purely. I would do my research online, call around, find some place that's reputable. And remember, there are certain precautions tattoo artists can take to prevent cross-contamination of certain diseases. There's disposable tips, tubes, grips, clip cord bags, machine bags. If you walk into a parlor and see exposed equipment, <coughs> improper sanitization procedures, anything like that, turn and walk away. Chris asks, how many tattoos do you have and when can we see them? I think I'm up to around 16 now. Uh, I'll show off a few of them right now. So this is actually the matching tattoo that my best friend and I got. Uh, nine years ago. Skull with a Metacross, that is for the people of my family that have since passed on. I have a cube, I have my Metacross, inverted pentagram, an Ankh, the Eye of Horus, and I also have my Tribal Phoenix, which doesn't look like that. It's a really bad job. I have Never Forget, my Bear Paw, and my Turtle. This one right here, my night medic. Those are also the star constellations that align with the pyramids of Giza. Bit of a nerd. Clinton asks, can we expect the same level of interaction with viewers as the other guys on the channel? Uh, I'm really hoping to get more free time to be able to uh, chat more, comment more, be a part of the live shows. Unfortunately, my work schedule at the moment is pretty hectic. I'm a supervisor at a busy restaurant in Niagara Falls, so we tend to get a lot of tour buses, and I tend to work a lot of crazy shifts. All right, so that's it for today. If you guys have any other further questions or comments for me, please feel free to leave them down below. Also, I recently activated my Twitter account. You will see the address down below as well. Feel free to add me. I'm going to try my best to comment and update my status as often as I can. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great Tuesday.